Good day everyone. Today is 25th of September 2022. This this comes from a publication by the World Economic Forum and I guess this was back in 2016. You know, you all know anybody watching my site or or my videos, you know, you've all heard of the World Economic Forum. And uh, if you haven't, you know, you should look this up. <laughs> and you might uh, when you hear about these things, you think it's conspiracy theories or something like that, but it's not. You know, you, you just look it up and you can see like some of these videos of these very, very rich and powerful people, the most powerful people on earth, basically. And some of the things that they're saying, you know, what they're, they're trying to push through something that they call the Great Reset, the, the things that they want to impose on us, on us uh, peons. <laughs> I don't know if that means they're peeing on us or whatever, but uh, anyway, peons, I think it's spelled P-E-O-N-S or something, and it just means uh, uh, people that are less important, like all the rest of us, that aren't millionaires and not politicians, but, um, and uh, we're supposed to be voters if you think that the vote is actually, does it, if it actually works. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there was a publication back in 2016, and it was called Welcome to 2030, and um, as you know, it's been put out the past year or two, you know, that's the, the date where they want to start imposing, or at least they're doing it now, but they want to be semi-complete with uh, what they call the Great Reset. I keep uh, interrupting myself, but it was called, Welcome to 2030, I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. And of course, uh, well, that is the precursor to what they say now, you will own nothing and be happy. So let me repeat again. It's called Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. And this was uh, written by Ida Auken. Uh, she's a member of the Danish parliament. Um, and she's chosen to be a, a young leader of the World Economic Forum. I believe that's Klaus Schwab picks these people. And uh, some of the other ones he's picked is uh, Justin Trudeau and... Emmanuel Macron and there's uh, he has mentioned that Vladimir Putin is part of this but uh, I think probably uh, maybe some of the early uh, musings that he was having probably before even 2016 because in 2016 this was not even official policy this uh, great reset you will own nothing and be happy so probably Putin was listening to him and uh, maybe because he is a good leader and he's well known and recognized all over the world. Maybe Klaus Schwab is saying that that uh, uh, that Vladimir Putin was uh, one of was one of those in his little clique. But there's a whole there's a whole handful of these people, and uh, and you really have to if you don't know what the World Economic Forum is or what the Great Reset is, you really have to look look this stuff up. It's it's in, in this um, uh, article that was written. And it, I think it was it was in the Forbes magazine, and you can find it online as well. If you if you just go by that title, uh, I'm sure you'll you'll find this. But it's it this was posted on the World Economic Forum website. You won't have any property. You won't have an apartment. You you don't even have clothes. You don't have any cooking utensils. <laughs> and life life has never been better. Right. Uh, they say that if you want to get transportation. Uh, you call up. I don't even know how you call up, but I, I suppose that you were supposed to be uh, leasing your telephone. I mean, your cell phone, and uh, and everything else, and it's delivered to you by drones or who knows what. And if you want to go somewhere, you have a, a robotic car that comes to pick you up, and you're cooking pots and pans and everything. It 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 comes delivered to you. And uh, yeah, owning no clothes, you know. So you, and and supposedly, algorithms uh, can decide on which clothes you wear. You can, you have the the liberty to choose for yourself, or else the algorithms will choose for you. And it says also in that writing that the algorithms know me better than myself. So, so I let them choose which clothes I wear. You have to find that. You just have to find that. And believe this, again, I have to repeat, that's 2016 uh, they were envisioning that. But if you know any of the things that they're talking about lately, 
they uh, they say they want to imprint, uh, put computer chips in everybody's head, and to control your thoughts, to monitor your thoughts, and then you have social credit scores. So when you're thinking the wrong thoughts, like if you are supporting the wrong political candidate, or maybe you're supporting some sort of military actions from some other country that's on the other side of the globe that uh, is trying to stop a takeover, yeah, then you lose your, uh, your points. And maybe a lot of you know that Justin Trudeau, the, the leader of Canada, has uh, given some sort of a television speech televised throughout the entire country uh, that he's all in favor of this Great Reset and uh, implementing it. And obviously Joe Biden is as well. Build back better, that is a phrase from the Great Reset. This morning, I think between 3 and 4 a.m., um, Ukraine bombed a major hotel in Kherson. And in that hotel is where they were doing a lot of this referendum. And also in the hotel was a former minister of Ukraine that has decided that he had switched over and does not like those things that are being implemented by West Ukraine, and he's now on the, he was now on the side of the East Ukraine. So he's, he, he got killed in that, and a lot of people are killed, and they're still trying to recover bodies at this moment, at this very moment. So, a lot, like I said, a lot of reporters were in there, and a lot of people, of course, are missing that they knew were in this building. Obviously, you know what happened to them. There was a large group, I think it was 40, around 40, I, saw, I only saw the, the footage of it, and there's a lot of um, West Ukrainian soldiers um, that are prisoners of war pleading with, uh, uh, I guess it's politicians, I, they didn't say who those people were, but they're pleading that they want to be admitted into the East Ukrainian military to fight against the West Ukrainian fascists that are occupying their country. So it's not the East occupying the West, it's the West occupying the East. And you can even extend that by looking at the further West. Western Europe, Western countries, United States, trying to seize control of Ukraine. You know, U Ukrainians and Russians, obviously, as you know, have a, a kinship together. And uh, the nation of Ukraine there were Ukrainian people. You can say they speak a Ukrainian language, but uh, that's a, a somewhat small portion. But the rest of Ukraine, there is the Transcarpathia region in the south, which all speak Hungarian, and technically should be a part of Hungary. And then there's Galicia, which is in the further west, which, you know, for a long time, up till 1939, always belonged to Poland. And then there's the Donbass area, which had always belonged to Russia. And Crimea has also always belonged to Russia. So maybe the rest of this was Ukraine, but it's a much like Belarus, the country I'm living in right now. Uh, Belarus became a country just like Ukraine in 1939. And there was a time, at, I think it was uh, 1918, I, I'm not sure for how long, I believe there was a small country called Ukraine, but the rest of it is, uh, is made up of portions of other countries. As you know, <laughs> there's so many uh, territorial disputes all over in the world. Like right now, Poland claims, um, I don't know if it's about 40% of Belarus, and they're issuing free passports to those in the state of, uh, of Gomel, I believe, and at least and this state as well, which is Brest. So any Belarusian who wants a free Polish passport can get it, you know, so. And uh, you can't... Uh, be mistaken when you realize, you know, what that move is supposed to entail and sometime in the near future or, or sometime in any future, distant or n near future, the reason for them doing that. The nuclear submarines that were stationed off the coast of Ukraine, um, at that time they left and they moved to another part of the Black Sea, Nova Russia. And word is that the, they are outfitting themselves for a long journey and uh, they're probably going to be surfacing somewhere in the Atlantic. And of course they carry nuclear missiles and it shouldn't be difficult to figure out where these uh, 
submarines might, might surface. And it's not very difficult to figure out really what is going on. That Germany is complicit in this as well, so that they can hope for, hope for the collapse of Russia and then get cheaper energy. They were already getting cheap energy, and I guess they now want cheaper energy. You know, so they, they, these countries, they want to collapse Russia. And uh, in the past, it's always been whatever you want to call it, containing Russia. I'll have to admit that I was stupid in thinking that. Uh, the Germany was just incredibly stupid because you would be tempted to ask yourself why would a country purposefully uh, collapse themselves or a leader of a country purposefully collapse their own country and uh, I've come to the conclusion that Germany was actually trying they just took a bad risk they weren't trying to collapse the country they were just risking risking that they could collapse Russia and thereby getting uh, cheaper or free, you know, natural gas and oil. So they just put their money on the wrong horse uh, by thinking that uh, Russia is nothing more than a gas station masquerading as a country. And uh, like I say, they 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 were thinking they're going to get this this gas free or or at a very reduced price or not. But I guess that was wrong. Because nobody's that stupid. You can't have a leader being that stupid. You can't become a leader and be that stupid. As you know, they just declared Hungary is not a democracy because they're not going along with all these sanctions against Russia. So those are bad boys, you know. <laughs> and they're trying to get rid of Viktor Orban. Uh, I think it was Viktor is his first name, but anyway, the, the president of Hungary, they're, they're trying to get rid of him. And he's probably going to maybe start up a referendum in the near future uh, to see if Hungary wants to get out of the European Union. They're, they're withholding money from them. I think there's a, a 7 billion euros of their own money and they're, they're hold, withholding it from, from Hungary. A bunch of nice guys. I guess that's what you call democracy. You, know? you don't have a freedom of any opinion. You, know, you do as what we tell you to do and that's democracy. <laughs> you think what we want you to think, you do what we tell you to do, and that's the new democracy. And now Russia obviously has, has problems between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and, uh, and I think it's Turkmenistan is also. It's the U.S. trying to start up all sorts, of, all sorts of problems on Russia's border. And of course Georgia, they're supposed to be having some referendum to decide on if they want to go to war against Russia or not. <laughs> well, it happens all coincidentally at this time. And Finland now joining NATO. And if you look at the past of Finland, uh, Russia defeated them. They were on the side of Nazi Germany in World War II, as was Ukraine, of course. Very odd that Ukraine and Finland seem to be uh, something against Russia today. But anyway, um, they signed a treaty and they said that they agreed to stay neutral. They are... Russia actually had the entire country and gave that back to them and said you're allowed to be self-governing and in return you must sign papers uh, to agree that you will be perpetually a neutral country. And why a country like Finland that is, has neutrality never have to worry really about anybody attacking them. Why would they all of a sudden decide not to be neutral? And more about the situation there, what's going on in the world. If you, if you look at uh, Germany, they still, <laughs> they're still doing everything they can to collapse their own economy. Why? I have no idea. They, uh, I guess they believe, I think they're, um, Olaf, Schultz, the leader of Germany, is supposed to be making a trip to, I, I think it's Qatar, this week, believing that they're going to sign a gas deal, I guess, a natural gas, because otherwise Germany is in big trouble. To, and, it, and it's like I, I believe that they do have enough gas, because they are getting trickles of gas anyway all the time coming in, but uh, I think it's uh, the scarcity of the gas has the, causes the price to be so high that uh, people are going bankrupt. And then they're going to have to print more money 
and pass it out to people so that they can afford to pay their gas bills, which I've heard are 300% higher now than they were last year. And uh, printing more money, as you know what that does, is that causes more inflation. Well, that is inflation. You know, having more money, you know, in, in uh, uh, active in the, in the economy is inflation. If inflation is not necessarily yet, the price is getting higher, but that's always a consequence of it. I guess that's the real definition of inflation is just an increase in the supply of money. So prices are going to be going up even more. The euro is probably doomed to collapse. And if you saw the Rand Corporation documents, that's the whole plan. You know, the United States is out to try to collapse both Russia and Europe all in one fell swoop. It looks like they're, they're able to do it based on the stupidity of the leaders of Europe themselves. Or maybe that's the whole plan. Maybe they're trying to collapse their own continent. As I say, I'd like to thank anybody that, uh, that's watching my videos, giving me some views and putting likes. By the way, yeah, don't be shy. Press the like button <clears throat> and subscribe. I'm not out for any money. I'm just uh, uh, trying to say my side here. You know, there are things sometimes that I, I know about here that <clears throat> maybe other vloggers don't know. That, that happens once in a while. So just like the attack maybe this morning on that hotel in Kherson, I'm, I'm sure other people are going to be reporting that. But uh, I heard about that a little bit earlier than most people. I guess soon right after it happened. And uh, you know, those people that died, a lot of journalists died. You may not hear about that at all in Western news. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you see that, uh, that uh, <laughs> missed interview, I guess you'd call it, uh, with Christiana Amanpour and, uh, and the leader of, of Iran? Of course, there probably never was any, any interview agreed upon by the president of Iran, but they, you know, you know CNN, they probably staged it all. And they show Christiana Amanpour sitting in a chair, and the chair sitting right across from her is empty. <laughs> what a what a bunch of staged propaganda. You know, you can't expect anything more from CNN. It's absolutely amazing. You have to see that. You have to find out. And then they're talking about, uh, what was it? They're some, showing some sort of a riot. I can't even remember what that riot was supposed to be about. Oh, it was about a uh, some woman, supposedly, that... Um, wasn't wearing a headscarf and supposedly she was in prison and the authorities killed her. Yes, it was a very, very serious crime not wearing a headscarf, you know, <laughs> and that they killed her for that, you know. You just cannot believe this stuff. You, you can't believe the crap that, that CNN comes up with, you know, as if that's a... But then all these people and they, these having these riots, they're, you see cars on fire and these people aren't wearing any kind of mask, so you see who they are, and, and they're throwing stones or whatever the sort of a deal is. And you know how easy it is to find out who these people are that are doing far, far worse than not wearing a, a headscarf or something like that. You know, they're maybe smashing buildings or something. And who knows? It's probably not even in Iran, and it's probably not even this year. You know, for all I know, it was in Mexico. Mexicans look like Iranians for, the, for a large part, so... So you don't know anything. I don't know. You know, we're not there. CNN, they've been caught staging so many things. I think they, they had, um, it was supposed to be in Iraq. They had a, uh, um, a um, siren go off as if there was a chemical attack. Um, and they put on masks. It was the reporters from, I think it was CNN. I'm not sure which, which, what are the, which one of these fake news channels. But they're putting on these masks. And it turns out that that was in Florida. And they just staged it all. I think I, I believe it was even in a studio. One of them was in a studio. Really, really <laughs> incredible stuff. So, but anyway, I don't have that much more to say. I actually probably would come up with a lot more to say, but I'll end up up soon here. And uh, you know, try to use whatever assets you have and, and make some wise decisions to uh, to uh, protect yourself. You know, a lot of these uh, cr crazies, especially in the West, you know, they're, they're not really 
there's not they're not really crazy here you know there's nothing really weird going on here it's like it's it, you hear about this stuff in the west and they're acting i don't know what you know we we might get some crazy things here if, if old joe biden or some of those people decide to drop nuclear bombs over here and like putin said and of course they misconstrued it all is that he said that that he would not use nuclear weapons unless somebody else used it first on russia or that is is an imminent threat of of uh of a major attack upon russian soil or something like that so and he said it's not a bluff but uh you know it's 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 a, it's frightening anyway it's probably a lot a lot closer to a nuclear war right now than it was at any time during the former Soviet Union time. The USA just keeps pushing. I guess you could say poking the bear. You've got to poke the bear, poke the bear, keep poking the bear till you get a reaction out of him. Well, you know, they got kind of a reaction now, but uh, what happens when the bear gives you a real strong reaction? And it looks like that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to provoke China in Taiwan and now they're trying to what are they doing nobody knows what they're doing I guess they're trying to look like they're tough and they think they think nothing's gonna happen that they can do this with impunity and get their way you know obviously uh, like I said uh, one of the major goals is to collapse Russia you know and they've been doing this for a long time and like I said in history you know they've they've they started this uh, the the uh, Europe Europe started this you know there, there was no European Union of course and I think it was the year 972 and uh, you know, they set up marches, like the Northern March and all. I, I mentioned this in another video, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't go on to it. But anyway, that was to, to keep the Slavs out, out of Europe. And uh, I also have, have mentioned that they, they don't like the Ukrainians at all. I think they probably like, they probably hate the Ukrainians more than they hate the Russians. But, but the Ukrainians right now are being used as useless idiots, unfortunately. And uh, it's a sad thing. There's rich... Uh, oligarchs and politicians um, in Ukraine, they're just going to retire to luxurious lives in places like Israel. And that's another thing. It's very strange that this ideology, they hate the Jews, but yet they have Jews that are part of the ideology and they fund the ideology in Ukraine. You know, very strange, you know. I don't even want to get into that or, 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 or make any kind of predictions why this is going on. You know, a lot of you can have your, your, your own opinions. You may know a lot more than I do, but uh, anyway, let's leave it at that. And till next time, I hope you subscribe and like, and we'll see you then. Bye.